Excellent. Uh, so I want to say hello to everyone. I'm so excited to be with you, be with you this here this evening, and uh, to this virtual open house for the data science program at Utica College. Um, this is something that uh, it's very very exciting uh, for me to talk to you about. And uh, please, uh, if you have any questions along the way, uh, please go ahead and enter them into the chat. Uh, we'll try to, to answer them as quickly and as promptly as you can. And there's always going to be time at the end to to hit. Uh, all the questions, or we'll definitely get back to you. Um, Alex with admissions is definitely monitoring the chat. And so uh, without that, uh, I just wanna show, this is a picture of our library at Utica College. I think it's a great place to start. My office is right across the way. This is a great picture of it, but this is the picture I prefer. Uh, it's a picture of me right up front. And uh, you know, I, it's a, Utica College is really a, a wonderful place. And this library, and, and, and it's, it's really just sort of a, a one of those things that I just like to showcase that uh, Utica College is definitely a lovely, lovely college. And we have a wonderful undergraduate population. We have a wonderful graduate population. Um, it really is founded after um, uh, World War II to help uh, uh, the GIs coming back from, from the war. And that was actually its founding was in 1946. And I'm really, really connected to that uh, because um, I'm a veteran. Uh, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit. But here's our agenda for this evening. Uh, we're going to do a quick introduction of the speakers. Uh, we're going to talk about data science and the career outlook, talk a lot about the program, uh, what makes Utica College unique, and then uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk a lot about what it's like to learn online. Um, real quick about myself, uh, some of you might have seen my, my bio online, but uh, I, I went to the United States Military Academy at West Point. I graduated uh, before 9-11. And uh, right, right in the middle of uh, flight school, uh, that all uh, took place. And I, I spent about uh, seven years in the Army. And I bring that up because um, I, I transitioned from this really uh, high intense job uh, of being an Army aviator and then transitioned into uh, academia. I got my, both my graduate degrees uh, with the help of the GI Bill in North Carolina. And then I went to work at a hospital. So I kind of transitioned again from academia and the data-driven work I was doing uh, into data-driven work in healthcare, which definitely had a, its own learning curve. So I'm used to these, these transitions. And many of you are probably gonna experience that once you start down the road of becoming a data scientist, uh, hopefully with us at Utica College. So, and then, then after I was uh, at the hospital, then I, I found this job. And I have to tell you that um, I'm very, very passionate. I love my job. I'm one of the few people in the world that absolutely love my job. I love teaching. I love teaching graduate students, and I'm going to really, really enjoy being part of the journey uh, with you. So with, with that, I want to introduce, oh, and that's a picture of me real quick uh, back in my Blackhawk uh, uh, when I was a much, much younger person. Uh, I want to introduce real quick uh, Sean. Sean is, he's really a, a wonderful person and such a hard worker, and uh, he took uh, a data science course as an elective when he was in the MBA program, and he got hooked. And it was really, really neat to see his transformation uh, from uh, this data novice to this data guru. And it happened right before my eyes. And that's the one thing I absolutely love uh, about teaching. So uh, with, that, now, with that brief introduction about Sean, I'll let you uh, turn it, I'll turn it over to you to introduce the rest of yourself. Thank you, Dr. McCarthy. Uh, like, like Dr. McCarthy said, um, I entered into the MBA program. I basically, at the point in my career where I wanted to, I knew I wanted to do something else, but I wasn't sure what it was. So I jumped into the MBA program, um, really liked it. And, and, and like Dr. McCarthy said, I took an elective in the data science program uh, and ended up getting my um, concentration for the MBA in business analytics. I loved it. <laughs> when I finished the MBA, I kept going. So I also kind of did a career transition as well. So when I was within, when I started the program, I was a supervisor, mostly doing administrative tasks. I wanted more of a technical skill set and to actually start doing more work again. Uh, the MBA started that and the data science really finished it. So I've, I've transitioned from being a manager and working on administrative tasks to working as an economist in a data-driven decision-making. And then now currently uh, working as a manager of quantitative analysis um, at an investment firm. So it's, it's, it really, same thing, did a, did a career path and, and Utica really helped me get there. And, and it's really uh, like a common, you know, theme where, you know, people are really striving to transform themselves uh, and, and see data as a pathway for that. And I'm very excited because it's, it's transformed my life. And I, I see it happen with each of my students. It's very exciting. And again, 
I want to acknowledge Alex with admissions who's here with us as well. So uh, the three panelists here today, and I want to thank uh, each of you for, for coming. Um, so real quick, the, uh, I want to talk real quick about uh, the data science environment. And this, this slide helps us understand all the kind of different flavors that are out there because there is a there are different flavors and there's definitely a hierarchy. And I'm so pleased that at Utica College, we offer a master's of science in data science because I really do see it as this kind of big overarching uh, science that kind of all the other ones kind of fit into. And, and that's the neat thing about the data science degree from Utica College is that it can be in almost anything. A lot of people come in here, they want to do in cyber, they want to do in business. Those are all very wonderful and applied but we have a social science aspect to it. We also, and if you wanna do something totally on your own or healthcare administration or uh, financial crime, those are all wonderful pathways you can do with the data science program that we have at Utica College. Uh, and there are a, lot, a lot of those other flavors are, are, are powerful and you'll do some of those things too. Uh, but it's one of those things that um, if you learn the science side of data science, because you're like the first class you're gonna come in as a, and become a data scientist. You know, and that's very, very important to us. Uh, you're going to start modeling in the first class, and then and then we're going to move on, and you're just going to get deeper and stronger, and as you progress uh, along your journey to become a data scientist. So, um, so just to talk about the career, I'll look. A lot of people really like to look at the dollars and cents of it, and and that makes a lot of you know a lot of, it makes that makes sense because um, you know there's definitely an investment you're making in your yourself to take on a graduate degree. Uh, but the one thing I'll tell you about this is that. Uh, especially in this last year, a lot of people have seen that the data science space uh, hasn't shrunk. Some people, I do know some data scientists who've lost their jobs as a result of the COVID recession, but the ones I know uh, lost it specifically in uh, industries that were very, very hard hit. Uh, the one in particular that I'm thinking of was in the hospitality industry, uh, but he, he was hired pretty quickly thereafter. Uh, and it's also, this is one of those great jobs that you're part of a team doing a lot of investigative work and you're doing a lot of collaborative work, a lot of creative work, which is what I really like about it is the creativity the collaboration and, and, and really just finding something new uh, to help your organization, you know, either uh, help with the bottom line, make things more efficient uh, or, or a new insight that can really transform things. It really, really is a lot of fun. Uh, and that's the one thing that keeps me, you know, seeing my students grow, but also, you know, just, just digging and getting in, in and finding things. Uh, that's really, really exciting for me. Um, so there's a lot going on in this slide, but I want to uh, point to the, the three circles on the right, the Venn diagram on the right. And we all come in to data science with what, we've, what we have, you know, from our, all of our life experiences. And that's the one thing that's so wonderful about graduate school. Uh, most of our graduate students, all of our graduate students come in with so much rich experience. They have all which of domain knowledge. They might be, they might want to shift domain, but that's still going to be some very rich knowledge that they come in, some rich experiences. And some come in with some, a lot of math skills, some a little bit less, and some with some computer science skills, maybe it's a little bit less. But our goal is to push you towards the, the middle there, where that unicorn is, which I always think is funny. Uh, but it's, it's one of those things that we want to strive to develop ourselves as much as we can uh, and, and to build those spaces to where we can become the strongest data scientists we can. Now, the domain comes from the, uh, the specialization that either you're already in or you'll take on at Utica as part of your electives. Computer science and IT is baked into a lot of the classes and the math, you know, we have one specific class, but again, it's, all, it's baked into a lot of the curriculum where you're gonna get a lot of math along the way. You might not even really realize that you're getting math. Uh, and then we have six courses. Uh, they run pretty sequential, although some, you'll get your electives along the way. Uh, and then we have the, the social, uh, we have the, the specializations at the bottom. Again, social science analytics, which is very special to Utica College, and very, pretty unique. Business analytics, cybersecurity, and uh, financial crime. Those are award-winning uh, programs uh, acknowledged by the DOD, the NSA, very, very strong. But the last one I want everyone to strongly consider, a lot of people come into Utica College's data science program and they, they've assigned themselves to one of those. But the general one I think is actually perhaps the most strong because it allows each student to pick the four electives that best serve them. And it can be some in healthcare administration, it could be one cyber and two business, or two business to cyber and healthcare analytics, or some, something along those lines uh, really allows you to tailor what you're doing. Uh, so Sean, what, what, what do you, you had some stuff you wanted to mention about the, this, 
curriculum. Yeah, definitely. So I think just just first off, from from my background, I was a, a undergrad for in economics, but I I was I would not say that I was strong in in math or or anything like that. I, I had zero coding experience, and I honestly didn't wasn't a whiz at 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 uh, Excel. Like I I went and do that, and I still you know open eyes and was able to learn and and advance. And I think um I found a love for math, even though within the data science realm uh excel has <laughs> obviously gotten a lot better uh and coding now too so it was all skills that I either didn't have at all or i wasn't comfortable with and, and by the end of it I, I felt great so that's just one aside and then all of these courses are, are were great um the core courses there on the left so i've i've used pieces of these courses in two so yeah so when i was in the program i ended up getting a new job that was focused on analytics uh before i even graduated and since then i've gotten another job um that's even much more focused in data science and, and quantitative analysis so um i've in both of those positions i use pieces of each of these classes uh and and i really lean on a lot of this i still have some printouts from some of the coursework in this that i that i lean to um so obviously you know it's a lot you're gonna learn a lot and and you know no one can remember everything so it's always nice to have these uh the courses and materials to lean back on so you can look at and then just job wise I and mean, i was able to get two jobs just from this program um employers are looking for this almost every listing that i've seen has some sort of data component um you know obviously it's most important thing is to learn all of this but these are a lot of buzzwords you know employers are looking for data mining they're looking for machine learning data visualization uh and data science so all everything you see here is going to help you when you're in the program and then when you get out thanks sean and the one thing i want to i want to i want to i meet with every student right at the very beginning and this is a point i was going to make a little bit later i meet with every student at the very beginning we talk we don't talk about data science we talk about your life goals and how we can make this program fit and I'm going to steal a little bit of my own thunder here. And I'll tell you that uh, most of the time I advise students to start looking for a data job after the first semester while they're in data mining and machine learning. That is when you become a very powerful, uh, you're, you're, you're very marketable at that point in time. You've had, by the time you finished machine learning, you've had four sixths of the core. Uh, and, and after that, it's almost all downhill. You know, you're already, you're already almost over the hump. Uh, you've learned a lot. And then through the electives, through the capstone and the data visualization class, uh, those are really uh, meant to help you hone. So again, I, I tell students, you know, maybe not start looking for a job at the very first semester, although I've had students be successful in that as well. But I'm actually uh, amazingly successful, uh, some, of, some of my students. Uh, but at the same time, the best time, you know, don't, you don't have to wait till the end. That's, that's the key point is actually to, to help market yourself early. And you're gonna have a lot, a lot of skills right away. Um, you're going to be a data scientist and, you're, and the key thing for each one of these is to recognize um, that, you know, data science is, um, you know, what we can cr cram into all these different courses like this much, we really try to, to maximize what we can teach, but data science is this huge. I mean, it's, it's just getting bigger and, and how can we uh, give you the strongest foundation to be able to, for you to land anywhere and to go, okay. You now, you know, I have this foundation, I can do anything based on that within data. Uh, and that's what's really exciting is that there really is, um, this foundation is really, really strong. I have to tell you that with the programming language that I learned in graduate school, um, wherever, you know, at, at the VA, they didn't have it. And so, but I had a strong enough programming understanding with SAS to pick up exactly what they were using. Uh, the same thing. Uh, you know, program languages come and program languages go. So uh, it's it, the key is understanding what's going on uh, and how and how to apply it. So I'm going to go into this next slide. Um, so the, there's one we talk about this a lot because this is actually a very important uh, component is the thesis or the capstone, which is we under the umbrella of the culminating, culminating academic experience. And you have to have one as the thesis or the capstone. And another thing that makes Utica College's data science program pretty unique in, in the nation or in perhaps in the world is that we offer a thesis option. Uh, that's not for everyone. There, it is a little bit more robust. It does require a committee. It does require some extra work along the way. Uh, but it is for those students who wanna go on and get a doctorate degree or are working in or want to work in a research space like think tank, something along those lines. An organization that's really, really more research driven. 
Uh, most students don't offer that, but uh, it's really exciting when, when they do. Um, there's some really amazing things that have happened and are happening. I have two theses students that are gonna finish this semester and they're gonna defend just like I defended my thesis uh, with the committee that's just, just like the committee I had. And we really uh, strive to support those students just like we strive to support all of our students. The second option, which is sort of the default, uh, you, have to, you have to really want the thesis to do it. It's one of those things you really want it. But most students opt for the capstone. And we're really beginning to, I wanna say beginning, it's, it's well established that we have these wonderful industry mentors, these companies that uh, do three things for us. They provide uh, data, they provide uh, second readers, the domain experience, and they also provide the problem statements. So all of a sudden, uh, we, we have Fortune 50 companies that are partnered with us. We have a major uh, bank, uh, and, I, and I would tell you more specifically about them, but uh, they do ask to re, uh, because the data is so sensitive uh, that they're sharing with us that, uh, that we, we hold on to. But we have banks, we have a Fortune 50 company that's partnering with us, and they give us these applied uh, capstones. And the students uh, are able to take this foundation that we, I just talked about and really help these organizations through some really neat iterations, provide a new lens. Uh, and these companies are hungry for that. And it's a great exposure to not only uh, this really complex uh, problem and this really rich data, uh, but also uh, the, the second readers who are just phenomenal and mentoring and guiding uh, these capstone students. So it's a really, really fun uh, activity. And we, those start, uh, we have those every, every semester uh, and I, I have a class that starts in two weeks. I'm just so excited about this next research uh, capstone experience. So, but we, I, I, these are just some examples. And there's one there that uh, I really particularly like. It was the El Nino's effects on commodities markets. And it was really, really fun uh, working on that because uh, again, I'm not a commodity guy, but the person who did it uh, was. And I think Sean, uh, you have some more information about this, right? Yeah, yes, I do. So this, this was my capstone project. Uh, I basically wanted to take a blend of business and, and blend it with a different type of data. So I took weather data with El Nino's effects and, and pulled a lot of data from NOAA and, and other places like that, and then uh, looked at it for aggregates of commodities. So taking um, uh, commodity prices for wheat, corn, and soybeans, uh, and looking how those were affected in different areas of the country based on El Nino's effects. So it was it was it was great, and it was it was something Dr. McCarthy mentioned earlier. Like a great part of uh, data science is like the exploratory nature of it and being able to drill down. So that was a huge part of this. I, I had read a, a article years prior to it on uh, traders who were using weather data in Brazil to trade coffee. So that, that, that got, kind of sparked it, and I wanted to do something similar to that. So it was an extremely good learning experience. Um, I. <laughs> I have to be honest, so that I, I, my geographical area was a little too large, so the findings weren't what I was hoping, but uh, also important part not to uh, fudge anything, so I, you know, I went with what I found. Um, and then this, this actually played into uh, my current position. Um, this was something I had on my resume, and uh, we talked about it in, in depth on my interview, uh, and I really think it helped me get my current position. And so the neat thing about this is that, you know, this is the thesis if you want it. There's the capstone applied experience if you want it but it's also exactly what you want it to be. And I tell everyone, whatever you're interested in, you know, let's go for it. I have, I have people who did uh, clustering for NBA uh, teams and players. It was really, really, really neat analysis, but that's what really got, got them excited. I have another student who did something really fun with, um, it was the NFL. They wanted, they wanted to be able to predict who was going to win uh, each week in the, in the NFL. And they actually had a pretty good model. Uh, not one that I necessarily would, uh, put a whole bunch of money behind, but knowing the limits, there were, there were some opportunities. So it's one of those things that this can be exactly what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, I have to tell you that the, I, I, I generally am pushing most students towards the applied one just because it is so rich. But again, this can be just like the electives, something that you can really customize. Uh, I, have, I have students who did a whole bunch with, um, um, uh, what was it? The, uh, <laughs> uh, forgive me, it was the, uh, uh, like a bet, not a bed and breakfast, Airbnb. And they just scraped a whole bunch of Airbnb data and they found an Airbnb expert and they and they, they had did some really thoughtful Airbnb analysis. So this, again, that's what they were excited about. And, and we were able to support them uh, doing a fun Airbnb analysis. So uh, so it's pretty exciting. This is what, when you, when you think about your graduate experience, it's gonna be courses, 
And then this capstone is going to be one of the main things that's going to go on your resume. And that's how it is on my resume. It says, you know, this is my graduate degree. This is what I, this is my thesis. And it's written out, the title's written out. And it, it generates exactly like Sean said, a whole bunch of uh, conversations that you can have because there's so many layers to that. There's so many layers that, that go into that full project scope. So um, moving on to this next slide. Oh, I, you know, I just wanted, you know, I highlight here the applied industry mentors. So what, what, what makes you a good college different? Uh, it, it's hard to say you know, exactly, but we, up here is our list. And I really have to say, I'm really, really proud of our faculty. Um, what's really, really, uh, it's, we have faculty that really, really strive and really, really dedicated to helping you learn. And the, this really dovetails really, really nicely into the next one, um, the class size. Uh, if, I, if there's a class size, especially in the core where you're, you look around and there's 22 students, that's the biggest class you'll ever be in. Um, most of them are capped at 20 and, and we work really, really hard so that the faculty have smaller class sizes to provide more engagement with you, better feedback. Um, this is an asynchronous degree, but that doesn't mean you don't see faculty. Um, I have open office hours. I have meetings with students. Again, I, I think I mentioned earlier that I, met, I meet with every student uh, at, the, at the beginning of every uh, 501 class, which is the introductory class that everyone takes, um, you know, just to talk about goals. Um, we really work on uh, making our curriculum cutting edge, and we're actually constantly, constantly updating it. Uh, believe it or not, the, the curriculum that, that I'm teaching now, uh, I think Sean graduated a year ago, is, is different enough to where you know, Sean would get it, but it, you know, it, the classes are different. So we have some career services that are available, uh, and we have, we have a, a, an agreement, or a, we, have a, we use the handshake to help with opportunities and networking. Um, lots of professional networking. I have to tell you, your class colleagues are really, really good. And we have a, a really good LinkedIn group with that. And the last thing is we access the licensed software and everyone kind of goes, what, what's up with Altrix? Uh, Altrix, believe it or not, is it's coding. It's coding on an enterprise proprietary system um, that allows organizations that use it um, to, to really uh, quickly do uh, explainable code real fast. And instead of bringing in a whole bunch of syntax, you know, input colon, uh, you know, this file, this data, you know, connect to this database, a whole bunch of syntax and Python or R, which of course those are things that you'll learn. Um, Altrix allows us to get right to modeling right away. And it's actually something that's becoming more and more and more common. When we started with Altrix about three or four years ago, like four or five years ago, um, it was very, very, uh, non-standard for any organization to have a enterprise level software like that. Now it's almost, it's so common. Um, you know, Rapid Miner is an, uh, an equivalent. Uh, Dataku is an equivalent. Uh, Databricks is an equivalent. They're, the enterprise systems are just massive. Southwest Airlines operates almost exclusively with Altrix. You know, they have like 630 licenses. Uh, uh, the BNY Mellon, which is a huge financial organization, they, they have a whole bunch of different software, but they use Altrix. Uh, Ernst & Young, uh, major four, uh, they use, well, they use them all, uh, but they definitely use Altrix. Uh, so it's one of those situations where Altrix it, it permeates um, a lot of major organizations. And, if, and Tableau, uh, Tableau is one of the industry leaders in data biz. And so you'll get the full licenses for those. Um, throughout the, the course. So as much or as little as you like. And the neat thing about it is that when you graduate, you can actually, you, your license usually doesn't expire right away. So you can also keep using them uh, throughout. So uh, do you have anything? Uh, do, how do you feel about Altrix, Sean? Uh, yeah, no, I, I love it. I think it's, it's, it's been the, it was, it's, it is the best uh, data science and machine learning software that I've found. Um, mix of ease of use, <laughs> the, the drag and drop, I, drag and drop just is night and day from, you know, like Dr. McCarthy said, having to type everything out, right? Um, you're going to learn how to code as well, but if you're using all tricks, you, you have the skill set uh, to be able to work more efficiently. Um, and you have just much more wide range of um, platforms and algorithms and all types of things to use. Um, 
yeah, no, it's great. And then if you want the code itself, you can open it up to see what, what the code was behind the scenes. So you can almost teach yourself a little bit more with R or Python by seeing what goes behind the scenes in Altrix. Yeah. No, no, yeah, Altrix uses R and Altrix uses Python. So you can you, you can see what's going on. It, it is pretty exciting. And the one thing that people, uh, if you don't point it out, it can go missing. But when you're doing data science with Altrix, you're coding. But instead of using the syntax, you know, four lines to bring in a documented format or you know, some uh, data file and to format the, the cells, you use a tool or two. And it's, a, it's drag and drop. And organizations are using it because it allows a tremendous amount of understanding up and down the hierarchy from, from the data tech who is, you know, ma maintaining a database to a uh, data analyst, to the data scientist, to the managers who just have no idea about any Python scripting. The explainability that happens is a lot of the true value that comes from Altrix, but it's programming. It, it's, it, it really is, honest to God, data science programming. And you'll see that in uh, all the enterprise solutions that are out there, Dataku, RapidMiner. Uh, there's, just, there's just so many of them out there. Uh, we, we use Altrix because they were one of the first and they're, and they're fabulous. They're, they're, they're quite good and they're growing. Uh, and they have a great, they really love Utica College students. Um, so real quick, um, some, some highlights of learning online at Utica College, you know, it's really great academics, uh, really accessible faculty. That's really the, the key, like the faculty are accessible. If, you know, many of you might have done some on other online courses and actually one of the most consistent feedback I get from, from students is like, man, I've never had so much contact with a faculty member before uh, in any online class. And arguably, uh, even some on-ground classes. You know, you can go, you can sit in a class, but you know, the connections that we have, uh, the feedback you'll get uh, in, the, in the, whenever you reach out, you know, we're there. I, I, I meet with students, I met with students early, early in the morning, and I haven't met students late, late at night uh, to help uh, them overcome things. I've, I meet with them on weekends. I strive not to, but sometimes that's when uh, people really need the help. And so um, I've actually, uh, I've been, I've been on, uh, on a, a small trip and, and I, I take breaks to meet with my students who need, who need help. Uh, so flexible schedules, you know, this online program is meant to kind of merge into your life. Most of you uh, have jobs. Most of you probably have families of one sort or another. Um, this is a, a program that's meant to have some flexibility. Uh, I know Sean, you, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, definitely. So when when I started the program, <clears throat> excuse me, when I started the program, I was I was actually even before I started the program, I was looking at different programs. Um, I, I took a class in person, um, and I had a, I had the commute, I had a forty five minute commute each way. Uh, sometimes you know we get start late and get let out early, and it just wasn't. I, I just I found like that's what really opened my eyes to online courses that you don't really need to be in person anymore. Uh, and I took another course that was online, but it was, it, it wasn't any interaction with classmates, it wasn't hardly an interaction with the professor. So then, you know, then I found Utica. And like Dr. McCarthy said, uh, the interaction between faculty and students is, is, is amazing. I mean, I think I was definitely one of those person, people um, emailing on weekends and getting responses back within the hour so I could continue to work on something that I was, I was working on. And the interaction with uh, classmates as well was great. So, um, you know, people are spread out all over the country, if not the world, and some of the courses that I was in, um, we all talk multiple times a week on chat boards and we're working on assignments together and group projects. Um, and one of my closest classmates that I'm still, in, I still keep in touch with, she was out in Kansas City and I was in Boston and DC. Uh, and we would talk multiple times a week and work on, work on you know, coding together and things like that. So um, the interaction between faculty and student and student and student is, it was great. So I have to tell you, it's one of those situations where um, there, this is one of those, you know, some people are concerned about an online degree. Some people are worried about the interactions. It really is what, what you put into it is what you get out of it. You reap what you sow. Your interactions with your class colleagues can definitely happen uh, or, or not. You know, there's people that, that might make their, their pathway through an online program and, and, and not actually have a lot of engagement. But that's, you know, it, but the other times you, you have people that have tons of interaction. I, have, um, I set up groups in 501. And interestingly enough, um, there's been multiple situations where those, as they move their way, the, the students move their way through the, the program, I have them together in the capstone uh, and they're still hanging out once a week. 
uh, uh, because that's the sort of a little routine they set up. So, um, so I have to tell you the, uh, so we strive to be flexible. Uh, the, the goal is to work it into your life. Things happen, you know, two years to get a degree, people move, people change jobs, people find a significant other, people might lose a significant other. I actually had a student who, whose partner died. Uh, we find, you know, that the person wanted to continue. We found a way to, to help them uh, through these very, very challenging times. Uh, life happens. Uh, and we recognize we're just part of your journey and we want to strive to support you uh, as you're as you're on that journey. Smart thinking is one of those situa uh, things. Actually, uh, this is something new that Sean doesn't even know uh, that, that there's Python to, to uh, tutoring and smart thinking now. Uh, it's very exciting that it used to be like a writing something or other that we, we really helped students uh, who needed extra writing support. But smart thinking now has Python tutoring built into it. Uh, it's pretty, pretty helpful. There's discounts for military, law enforcement, federal employees and some corporate affiliates. Um, Alex will have all that listed for you. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about the Engage Learning Management System. Uh, you can access that from any device. Um, a, a computer is probably the best. Uh, but the session, there's, there's interactive sessions that, that, that we, a lot of times we record them so that if you can't make them, uh, you, can, uh, you can definitely uh, get all the information you need. Uh, so let me go to the next slide. And let me show you what it looks like. So this is actually my current course teaching data science 501. And you can see it's organized uh, into the eight, eight modules. And each module has a theme uh, and there's announcements. And we and I really strive, and, you know, it's one of those things that uh, nothing's perfect, uh, but uh, as you're striving to keep curriculum uh, updated, some, sometimes uh, 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 there, there's, new, there's newness that, that, that comes in. Uh, but really strive to make things extra, extra uh, unambiguous. Make, make sure they're very direct and you can understand exactly what, what we want you to learn. And it's broken up into you have learning activities, you, know, you have learning goals, learning activities, and then there's uh, you know, something to turn in usually each week. Uh, there's actually, there is something to turn in every week. And, that, and it's very interesting. Um, in that online space, your, your week starts on Monday and everything is due Sunday night. So it gives you all week to kind of prepare, do some work on the weekend, uh, it's due Sunday night. Uh, and then I, I work like hell to, um, to grade everything on Monday or Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday. Uh, but I strive to give that feedback right away. And most, most faculty do that. It's, it's really quite amazing uh, how fast, uh, because when, when, when you have work that's due the, the subsequent week, you wanna make sure you have that, that strong, deep, thoughtful feedback that enables you to be successful uh, on your next iteration. Uh, most of this work is project-based. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's, if there's a quiz, it's almost worth nothing. Uh, meaning it's really there just to help you see what's the most important part of readings. Uh, these are all generally, um, uh, uh, dedicated to help you, uh, by, by doing the work by, by actually, uh, uh practicing on, on real data. So I don't know, uh, Sean, is there anything you want to add to this, uh, uh, yeah, I just thought the, the setup was was very intuitive. Um, it was it was nice that the courses or each class is eight weeks and not sixteen. <laughs> that you're you're learning a lot in an eight week period, but it, like it doesn't get stale. Like each each week you're building upon the previous week, um, and and you're by the end you're you're ready, right? And then you're ready to move on to the next one. Um, sometimes I think in, in in you know a class that's sixteen weeks, it's drawn out too much this is definitely not the case like you're you're learning something each week you're building upon it um the system itself is easy to use and and you're, and you're good to go so yeah no i really enjoyed the eight week setup and and using the interactive system yeah and, and that it's in like when, when i was in graduate school I, I my six credit hours was full time but i did two three credit courses for 16 weeks here we have it you know it's one three credit course in eight weeks it ends and the next one starts and then that one ends and the next one starts. So it's the same load uh, as, 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 I, as it was when I was an on-ground student. So um, it just, it, there is a level of a, a intensity that might come from that, uh, you know, but at the same time, it's just, it's just one class and it allows you to focus. And you don't have to like, okay, am I, am I reading for this class? Am I reading for that class? You're reading for one class. Uh, and that, that level of focus, I think is, there's a lot of value added in that. So uh, we're actually coming to the very, very end of our presentation. Uh, are there, we'd love to hear if there's any questions. Oh, uh, Andrew, 
Uh, so how much time is there between classes? Here, let, me, let me go to the previous slide on this. Um, what ends up happening, it, uh, what ends up happening, you see down here, like uh, classes end on March 12th. Uh, that's when uh, the final project is due and data science 501. Uh, and then there's a weekend and on Monday, data science 503 starts. So it is, it is, it is there's a weekend between those classes. And that's usually the case every now and again, uh, between the spring and the summer, there might be a week. Uh, and there's always, there's always, always winter break, which is three to four weeks between the end of the term in December, and the beginning of the term in uh, the fall. I'm sorry, in the spring. Yeah, are there any other questions? I'd, I'd love to love to talk more. The, uh, there is a, I have a, I could talk about this all day. I, I mean, because I, because I love, I love teaching uh, my students. I love data science. It is so rewarding to see. And the, I don't know if I, I mentioned this. I, I teach 501 right now, but the other key course that I teach is the capstone. And and so you, you know, most students have me for two classes. Uh, some had me uh, every once in a while. I'll teach a data viz class. Um, but the but I get to see you at the beginning, and I get to see you at the end. And it's perhaps the most rewarding thing ever because I, I saw I saw many people uh, when they're brand new, you know, data novice, and then uh, and then they then I get to see them when they're you know data gurus, and it's so exciting. Uh, so we have a question about uh, the minimum GPA to stay in the, the program. Uh, the minimum GPA actually uh, it's not a minimum to stay in, uh, but the the rules are, and this is going to get a little too specific probably. Uh, the, the minimum rules are uh, you, you have to have a 3.0 to graduate. If you don't have a 3.0, uh, then you have to retake a class to, to get that. that. That's a B average. And then uh, if you fail two classes, uh, you're invited to leave. Um, uh, and you can all, there's always different sort of appeals for that. Um, there's one student who was able to appeal it that I know for sure. Uh, rightfully, you know, he had, he had a lot going on uh, and had failed two classes uh, because of life happened. And it was really rather um, a bummer, but he was able to appeal that and he was able to continue on. It's really excited. And I expect him to graduate uh, in the fall. So let's see, there's another question here. Are the projects mostly individual or group? So I will say this, in the data science course, most projects are individual. Uh, outside in the electives, especially in the business school, I think there are a fair number of group projects. Um, what would you say to that, Sean? Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair way to put it. I think the majority of data science projects are on your own. Although there was a few that there was a, a few classes that had joint projects, but um, there were small groups and it was it was easy and, and everyone worked well together uh, to divide out work. And then the business courses was were definitely much more group based. Um, but yeah, it was still it was still a good mix. You still got to work with your classmates, but other times you got to you know focus on your own project. Yeah, the. Uh... There was a question about uh, you know, are there jobs in Syracuse or do, do most people move to work? So what, I, what, I, what ends up happening actually, and, I, and this is something, again, I'm sending my own thunder here, is that most people are working in data organiz or organizations that aren't data driven. And I say that most of your, a lot of your opportunities are right where you are uh, because to move a, an organization from like having data and doing nothing with it to being data driven, um, that that's that's more than enough work for any any particular student. And, it, and again, data science is a team effort. So a lot of people um, can move. Uh, you might have to move. A lot of people like to strive to get jobs where they are, which is when, uh, before COVID was sometimes challenging, sometimes not. Uh, but now it seems like there's a whole bunch of people I know that are being hired and and they never show up to where, where they're going. Like the laptop shows up in the mail type of thing. Um, so there's a lots of variations. Let's see, there's some other. Uh, my computer used Power BI. Can I build in Power BI or is Tableau required? Now, so um, I'm pretty agnostic as it comes to uh, platforms. Uh, Tableau is actually a very great tool to learn. Uh, Power BI is pretty good too. I have my, my experience with Power BI is limited. I'll just be perfectly honest, uh, but I'm not against it. I think Power BI is, is, uh, does very well for what it's suited for. Um, all that to be said, you know, I have students who like, you know, can I do this in R? Can I, and I had a student actually, he did a hit, you know, his work in Julia 
And I dare some of you to go find Julia. That's the language that's likely to replace Python. Uh, it's already it's already up and coming. Uh, all that to say, um, I'm pretty um, I'm pretty uh, open to the, those opportunities. I think um, what you might be open to is that, to to learning that new interface because. Uh, believe it or not, there, in data science, there's these, these foundational ideas that we provide that, that can go anywhere, but there's also a very important that it'd, it'd probably be really good for you to say, I know Tableau, I know Power BI and Tableau, and those skill sets um, uh, are really, really important. Um, now there's probably, if you, it's probably one of those things that if you're really good at Power BI, Tableau is probably pretty, pretty straightforward as well. So, uh, so so uh, someone asked about uh, programming. Most students coming are new to programming. Uh, we, we, we strive to ease you into it. Uh, and that's why we start with Alteryx because that's the logic of programming. Well, first I need to do this, then I need, need to do this. And then we, then we dabble in R during 503. And so 503, we, we teach statistics, but we teach it with R and that's where you start learning. And and then, uh, believe it or not, I think we use R again in data mining, and then we use uh, a little bit of Python and machine learning. Uh, actually, I don't want to say a little bit, you know, but you do. That's how we learn it. And there is um, there is a learning curve to anything. Uh, what what I have found is, well, actually, let me let let me let Sean uh, jump in on there. What how how did you feel about the learning curve as it as it took place for you within the program for the the programming? Um, so yeah, so like I said, I, I had zero program experience at all before going into the program. Um, it was definitely uh, it was definitely a challenge. 100, it was a challenge. Um, but I think that uh, the professors were very helpful moving forward and, and providing uh, supplemental training and, and you know resources to help with the coding. Um, and like anything, it just takes time. So you know, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Um, and the students are also helpful too. Like I mean, like I said, I, I worked with uh, a classmate with, when we did a lot of coding together because it was it was something that both of us, <clears throat> excuse me, wanted to get better at. And we had, and neither of us had very much experience if any at all. So it takes time, just like anything, but it's it's something you can learn. And this is this is one of those things that you know we're a data science program, you know, and so we're focused on the data part. Uh, program is something that is part of data science, but it, it, it but it's actually much more of a foundational thing. Uh, so, um, so just you know, it, it is emphasized. Um, believe it or not, that the, we have uh, built-in tutoring for Python uh, with Smart Thinking, and uh, faculty really strive to help. Uh, there's a lot of tools that that are out there now, actually, um, that that Sean actually didn't get a get to take part of, but the. Now there's the uh, Google Collab, which is a way by which we can um, collaborate, collaborate with students on their Python notebooks. Uh, and there are notebooks. I haven't done it with R yet, but I've been told it's so new. Um, but it's one of those things that uh, uh, there, there's ways to enable you to, uh, to get strong. And again, this is one of those things you reap what you sow. Um, can you get through this program with just a little bit of, of programming? Sure, do you want to? I don't think so. I think you really want to dive in and get as dirty and as deep into it as, as you can handle. Uh, so here's a question. Here's another question from a guest. Can the program be customized to blend or add additional courses from different specializations? So the short answer is yes. So the specializations um, are, are basically four electives that we've that we've designed to help you uh, kind of get that strong foundational domain experience in business, financial crime, cyber, or uh, social science analytics. Uh, the goal with that, again, is, is that, uh, but, but there's just four electives. The requirement to graduate is four electives. So you can choose one from social science analytics, two from cybersecurity, and then one from business, or, or zero from business, all from social science analytics, or an independent study. Uh, we have a lot of students that are doing independent studies. And again, this is something that we're striving to help students uh, find new pathways. It's something that wasn't available to Sean, but we totally support now, where students go, well, I want to learn more. I have a student now, she was she was really wanted to learn a lot about data, uh, ethics with, with data and bias with data and social responsibility. She did capstone, she just finished it. It was, it was really, really strongly it was strong, but we don't have a class in that. You know, it's kind of baked into the whole curriculum, but she was very excited about it. So we found a way uh, to definitely uh, get into that. Uh, we have a question about SQL. We don't, we don't get into SQL. 
uh, SQL. We don't we don't get into SQL. SQL is a, a database that is so. So the short answer is uh, I'm expecting a SQL course to come very soon, uh, but we don't have one right now. So I don't I want to tell you uh, th there's one coming, uh, and it would probably be around if you started uh, this summer. It would probably be around for you when you got around to to uh, finishing machine learning. Um, actually, as we strive to make curriculum um, awesome. Uh, and cutting edge, we really want um, we really want to offer a, a course with SQL. Uh, we actually think it's so important that we actually uh, uh, we're expecting to actually reduce the the electives down from four to three and to offer that because we see we see it as so valuable. Um, and, and so that that's one of those things that I ex I expect it to uh, happen in the fall to be offered uh, in the spring, uh, if not if not earlier. So so the short answer is. No, but but we but we but it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, okay? because it because it's one of those things that are are that, that our students would just be so much stronger with it. So not not that they're not strong without it. Because the, what I feel about SQL is what I feel about all languages is that uh, SQL is important. But if you if you have those foundational ideas, um, you can go and pick up any language you want. You can go pick up Julia. You can go pick up SQL. That's what I did. You know, I knew SAS. I picked up SQL. Um, I actually learned, you know, I'm going to date myself a lot in college. I learned ADA, which is, was when I learned it was already dead. Uh, but you learn, you learn some of those key uh, calls, how to import, you know, it's like, what are the four things you need to learn any language, um, how to import a library, how to import a variable, how to, how to, uh, how to identify a, a variable, how to import a data set, and then how to run a loop. You know, once you kind of get those things down in almost any language, uh, SQL is made for database queries. Um, it's not not too dissimilar than from those kind of key ideas. Any other questions? Those are great questions. All. Yeah, I, I encourage you to ask Sean. And and here's something that uh, that I want everyone to know. Uh, Sean Sean is absolutely fabulous. But if someone wants a perspective that's other than Sean, a student perspective. Uh, from a, a more recent graduate uh, or another graduate, you know, the, um, we, we, have, we, have, we have students, we have graduates that would love to talk to you. Um, this is something that, um, uh, you know, that's the one of the things that I'm really, I pride myself in is that um, when my students come in, uh, they are, um, you know, I, you know, they're mine. They're, they're, you, you know, you, you're my student, you know, just like my mentor paid forward to me, all, all of the support that I've ever gotten from, from him, I strive to emulate that and pay it forward to my students. So it's really neat to uh, recognize that, you know, this is not just a, a two-year thing. This, uh, I, I'm constantly writing letters of recommendation. I'm constantly checking in on my, on my grads, on my students to see how they're doing. Um, there's a lot going on. And, and I really strive to support my students all along the way. Uh, you know, from from the from the coursework to balancing, you know, job offers. Uh, you know, do you, you know do we go to A? Do we go to B? Well, let's weigh them and weight them and, and better understand what's going on. It's really something that I strive is to, to maintain a strong working relationship uh, you know, with with my students. You know, mentor mentee, then then uh, grad alum to you know old old professor. You know, so it's one of those things that uh, I don't know. It, it's a great part of the gig. I really dig it. Any, any anything else, Sean? Is there anything you wanted to add? Um, I just think I mean, yeah. If, if you're interested in data science, this is a great program. Uh, I've I recommend it to anyone who asked me for a recommendation. Obviously I'm here, so I, I highly enjoyed the program, right? Um, but again, like everything that I have done during the program and since job-wise, I pulled from this. So um, it's a great education, it's a great resource, it's a great community, um, and you'll pick up a lot of the, 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 the kind of a platform you need to build upon and then also come out with skills that other other folks don't have so you can jump right into a new position and hit the ground running so if this is what you're thinking if you want to go data science route this is, this is a great program and if you're already in data science i have to tell you I mean, you know it's absolutely amazing you know i've had people i had a 
we had one of our uh, early graduates. He came to us. Who he managed a team of data scientists, and he came because he wanted to be able to engage and get more out of them, and understand exactly what they were doing. Uh, and then you know, it's from that, you know, this, this you know, this main, you know, almost basically an executive, all the way down to people who. Uh, are, are truly trying to transform themselves from where they are in a, in a either an industry or a job that they don't really prefer uh, and, and, and jump into this. And I have to tell you, there's almost, there's almost nothing you can't do. I don't know if you caught what I just said there, but it's like the data science is so powerful, um, whether you work for a nonprofit, for, you work for a government uh, organization like the VA or healthcare, um, it really is quite, it's really kind of taking over. And it, and then within the organization, you become highly valued. And, and within the organization, you become part of a, a team that's getting things done and providing new insights. And I find that truly rewarding. That's, that's one of the neatest things that when I was working uh, to help transform healthcare within the VA, um, making it data-driven and then keeping that, those, those, I, those, mean, those main foundational ideas that, that a lot of people, you know, just, they, they don't, they, it just enabled me to be, to be so powerful and to do so much for my, my organization. And it really is, um, you know, when, when you have a data science uh, degree from, an, you know, it's particularly from Utica College with cl small class sizes, engaging faculty um, with, you know, it, driven uh, capstones, uh, using software uh, like we have, it's, you know, with project based teaching, it's really, really, really rewarding. Well, good. Well, um, this has been great, Dr. McCarthy and Sean. Um, I, we've got a, a ton of information here that I'm, and I'm glad that this has been recorded because we'll be able to send this out to folks that weren't able to, to make it. And, um, and then for some of the folks that are here now and some that may have um, entered the uh, webinar late, uh, this will be recorded and we can send this back out to you to kind of review again. But um, Dr. McCarthy, Sean, I appreciate you guys doing this. This has been a fantastic, <clears throat> excuse me, webinar. And um, I think we've got some great questions that were answered today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time, Alex. Appreciate your time, Sean. And thank you for everyone, uh, all the st prospective students. Hope to see you this summer or maybe this fall. Yeah. It really is. A, it's really a wonderful, you know, it's a journey. Yeah. Uh, but, it's, but it's a great one. And I'd be glad to be part of it with you. Absolutely. And for those who are looking to apply, feel free to reach out to us in the admissions office. We're normally here in the office Monday through Thursday until about 8 p.m. So we work late uh, to service students all over the nation. And um, Fridays, we're normally here till 6. So feel free to reach out to your program manager, anyone you've been in contact with, or if you haven't been in contact with anyone, feel free to reach anyone in the office and we can help and assist. So. But again, thanks again. I appreciate everything, guys. This has been fantastic. And um, if there's no other questions from our viewers, um, we'll go ahead and end the webinar at this point. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing or speaking to any of you in the future.